This week, we're joined by friend Pat Dunn, and we've written songs about planes, trains, and automobiles. That's right, we've written songs about Chevys, Boeing 747s, and my Thomas the Tank Engine Fleshlight. Robbie! <laughs> hey, me and my friends share it, so it's a train in two ways. Wow. As long as I can go last. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Roids Review Podcast. I'm Rob. And I'm Andy. And we are joined by our friend, Pat Dunn. You know him, you love him. Hi, Pat. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I didn't know who was going to answer first, Andy or I, and I was giving Ant Andy the shot. And since we're on Zoom, I noticed we both looked at our cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, who's going? Who's going? Yeah, we were trying to look at each other, and it's like, oh, that doesn't work over Zoom. Mm. Yeah. Who could it be? Thanks for joining us, Pat. Oh, Andy, thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure to be on. Yeah, thank just me. Yeah, it is always Andy's call. You redheads <laughs> got to stick together. Yes. The less than one percenters. We will rise. Yeah, yeah. One day, <laughs> one day we will shine. Less than one percenters is not a good thing to call yourselves right now. It's true. Mm -mm. You're even higher up than the one percenters. Yeah. We're making a comeback. Occupy gingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robbie, have you ever seen this movie before? I have never seen planes, trains, and automobiles before. What? Whoa. I have seen one scene in this movie. I remembered it vividly my entire life. And that was the scene on the highway where they're going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I also okay. think that is arguably the funniest scene in the movie. Or at least it's my favorite scene. That confirms it because I remember driving around with a friend and i'm pretty sure now that you say that it was you we used to like roll down our window and holler <laughs> yes, at other drivers and we go, you're going the wrong way but like we're at like a, we're at like a red light <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep yep yeah oh they're yeah. drunk yeah <laughs> what about you pat have you seen this movie before um yes i've seen this many times so i figured I think any any episode I've been on for your podcast, I've never seen the movie beforehand. So kind of peter okay. out halfway through your episode. I'm like, I don't know anything. <laughs> well, this I've seen a bunch of times. And uh, to prepare, I watched it every single day this week. And without uh, yeah, yeah. fail, cried at the same scene every yep. single goddamn time. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yes, dude, yeah, I'm broken. Gets me. Gets me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does it really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen this movie a billion times as well, and it gets me every single time. I watched this movie twice this week, and while I enjoyed it, I did not cry, nor did I feel any emotions other than, oh, that's funny. You're a thief of joy. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm not weeping at a movie with John Candy in it. Listen, John Candy's the one making me cry. I yeah. figured he was. I think it's uh, also crying because it's John Candy who says the, the line. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. We have like a deep-rooted love of this man. Like if he died, like he died more children. Yeah, so I was gonna he, say, it's it's not, not if he died, he did yeah, die. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, well, he could be in Cuba with Tupac. We never, I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, he died when we we're like seven or eight years old. It didn't really uh, crush my childhood, but if he, right. if like, we grew up with the guy, you know, as like a fan, not like I went to high school with him. Also, <laughs> have you have you seen the like the uh, I forget what it was. I think it's a documentary, and Steve Martin, he's got like the script where like John Candy apparently had a whole speech but it was cut from the movie and Steve Martin just reads it to himself oh, and yeah. weeps yeah. and just that I think about that and I'm like fuck man yeah. also just seeing old men cry it gets Steve it. Martin's old and like when he cries I'm like oh fuck now I'm crying damn it yeah. well, it's a, well it's a comedy movie yeah <laughs> The problem is Steve Martin's looked old since like 1974. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he has. But you know what? Uh, he he's like he takes off his shirt at some point in this movie, and he's like kind of shredded. Yeah. yeah. Well, when this movie was made, he was only about 41 years old. Still, like it's just he just looks old because of his hair. Yeah, I mean I'm 33. I ain't I don't look like that. 
Well, also in the eighties, everyone was in shape. Yes, that's we true. Yeah. We didn't have a uh, Chris Krispy Kreme donut wasn't out yet. <laughs> you know what it was? It was all them trickle down economics. Mm. Mm, made everyone in good shape. Yeah, that's what that well, was for. Yes. Speaking of the eighties, what what year did this come out? Oh, I, this movie came out the year of our Megazord, nineteen eighty seven. If you're feeling like heaven, not my Megazord. Oh, okay. No, no, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was, right. oh my, all right, Andy, Jesus Robbie Christ. got offended. All right. I, I didn't, I didn't understand. I don't know what 1987 did to you. Uh, my brother was born. Oh, wow. Yeah. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is number 22. So is that where you're going to start? I'm going to definitely start there, but then I'm going to jump to the top five. But it, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles made just shy of $50 million. Ooh. And Andy, what was the bud get? I couldn't tell you. Do you know, Robbie? Andy, you know what's funny about what we are on? Remember how I said we are on Zoom or as I'm on my Zoom? That's why my connection is so bad. I'm using a Zoom. I was using a Microsoft iPod. <laughs> the beauty of these devices we use is I can just look it up, brother. I think it was 15 million. It was exactly 15 million. Thank wow. you. Wow. Pat caught oh. on to my stalling as I pulled up the <laughs> yeah, website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the website, I mean Wikipedia. Yeah, the, I'm on the Wikipedia page right now. <laughs> language, is... English, bug... <laughs> budget. This 15. is incredulous. Wait, you have Eng you have the language in English? That's my problem. I've had it set to Czechoslovakian. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I don't know a fucking word. Uh, well, number five was Moonstruck with eighty million dollars. It's like, ah, oh, the moon hit me. Nice. <laughs> When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a moonstruck. Yep, that's that's on the soundtrack for sure. Yeah. Uh, number four is Good Morning Vietnam. That's a Ooh, great movie. With $123 million. I didn't know that was such a mega hit. Yeah, me it, either. It's a, you ever see it? Yeah. That's one of Robin Williams' best performances. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He crushes crush that role. Yeah, yeah. Incredible film. Um, number three is Beverly Hills Cop 2 with $153 million. Uh, number two is Fatal Attraction with $156 million. I'm attracted to them, but I think I'm going to die. I'm attracted to murder. You ever see Fatal Attraction? I think Fatal Attraction is when you're in love with someone with AIDS. <laughs> uh, no, I've never seen <laughs> Fatal Attraction. Is that with Glenn Close and the yeah. Rabbit? Is that that movie? Yeah, yeah, um, it is. And the Rabbit? Yeah, no. I ain't spoiling it for you. Uh, you might want to. We might wait, cover it. Hold on, wait. No, I want to make sure I heard that right. Did you say Glenn Close and the Rabbit? Yes, yeah, a just rabbit. Her, It's her with the uh, the sex uh, thing there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant an actual fucking rabbit. The, it is an actual fucking rabbit. We're confusing the shit out of Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> it's from 1987. They had bunnies in films back then. I like to think that this is just like a prequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit yep. with Glenn Close as Jessica Rabbit. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> Please don't do this. Uh, I don't know any lines from Fatal Attraction, so I can't work it in there. The rabbit says that at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> I remember thinking, this this is weird. Yeah. The rabbit looks at Glenn Coase's legs and goes, the dip! <laughs> uh, number one is Three Men and a Baby with $167 million. Jesus. That's kind of like this podcast. Three nice. men and I have this baby. Andy, no. Uh-oh. Uh, would you like to start talking about the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? Different forms of transportation all around. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about it. Monorails, helicopters, and skateboards. Monorail. Monorail. Very good. Monorail. I hear those things are awfully loud. <laughs> they uh, glide as gently as a cloud? <laughs> All right, come on, Andy, now you go. I forget. You have to do the Apu voice, and you say, is there a track the track could bend? All right, we're not going to do the whole song. I promise yeah, we're not going to I'm not going to do that. Come on, not in your I... life, my Hindu friend. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, this opening, is this, what, this opening remind me of the opening of another movie, the title card, and I don't remember if it was Goodfellas or Taxi Driver, but with the words, just planes, trains, and automobiles speeding by. Um, Help me out here, guys. 
both previous episodes. Yeah. Check them out. Wait, are you talking to me? (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. One of those movies I liked, one of those movies I didn't like. Listen to both episodes to find out. Nice. Previous episode, check it out. We open up in a boardroom. Steve Martin has a plane to catch at 6 p.m. This is every corporate meeting you could ever go to. Is everyone just sitting around going, is this over? Real quick, thank you so much for listening. If you want to send us some feedback, send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. That's R-O-Y-D-S-R-E-V-U-E at gmail.com. You could also find our music on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your music by searching The Roids. That's R-O-Y-D-S. We have two albums and a Christmas song. Hope you like it. Yeah, I have never been in a meeting in my oh. life that was productive. No. Literally, literally none. Yeah. Any, work, any email could, could have solved every issue ever. Yep. At work, I get a lot of dirty looks because I often say at the start of every meeting, no meeting should last more than 15 minutes. Even that's pushing it, you know? No, no, because no, like... Where I we have to do where I work, we work with a lot of product development and like so we have to do launch meetings. But like, if you're a product manager, you show up there with the fucking presentation, tell me everything I need to know, and then I'll shoot you an email if I got questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, I like being in a classroom. I'm a lifelong learner, an LLL, if you would. Triple L. Yeah, it's all about the learning and how you read it. That's- Instead of mm-hmm. Triple H. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. That was really good, despite what Pat's saying. Wunter Lurst Lemsley. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Felt <laughs> weird the con- off the tongue. <laughs> the Connecticut blue blood. There it is. Yeah. Man, we're really terrorizing our audience. Triple H was known as Terror Rising in WCW. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. That was a deep cut, that brothers. Deep cut that wow. Went- that went right over my head. Good job. That cut was so deep that my virginity came back. <laughs> that cut was so deep, Sheryl Crow sang about it. Mm. Very good, Robbie. Excellent. That cut was so deep. Uh, this is my last resort. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Kevin Bacon makes a cameo. Him and Steve Martin are going for the same cab. Martin trips and falls before getting into the cab, so Bacon gets it. I do love a lineless cameo yep yeah and he's got like fifth billing heaven yeah billing in this movie is kind of crazy yeah well i'd imagine michael mckeon must also have high billing then he's got like his third or fourth who's third um um the wife uh okay layla robbins that's him right well you got me on my knees That would be insane if she didn't have third billing. Yeah. There's yeah. I, I I think this movie is also so good because there's not a lot of you have Prime, Steve Martin, and you have John yeah. Candy. I well it's just alright, these two, ninety five percent of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why this is this works. Yeah. It's just a a classic odd couple, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're not really trying to tell you anything here. It's like, hey, look at these two guys. Aren't they opposites? Right, right. It's not like, I mean, maybe you could take a step back and look at like, oh, you know, uh, you know, uh, everybody's got something going on, you know, like there's yeah. more to everybody. But like, it's really not. It's just like, I mean, the little sprinkling of that throughout the movie is fucking chef's hiss. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're not hitting you over the head with it. It's just there. And, like, you feel about it how you want to feel, you know? As Martin and another guy haggle over the cab, someone else gets into the cab. And he chases it down instead of just getting another cab. He's a very angry man. Uh, Neil Page is kind of kind of high strung. He is. Yeah. Well, he says, you're messing with the wrong guy. Yeah. Right? And yeah, then that he's going to shoot back. himself in the head. Oh, my fucking God. He is, uh, I mean, that that line is taken and then, like, remixed mm-hmm. throughout, like... <laughs> r- 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 yeah. R- r- remix! Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, what what what's the word? Sampled throughout the rest of the yes. movie. Yes. <laughs> like, whenever he's mad or whatever. It's pretty funny. Yes. 
that scenes and scenes were just him. With yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Martin always plays a guy who's great at getting angry and frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because he does, that's where he shines in his physical comedy, as a guy who's just absolutely defeated. Yeah, and, you know, I think this is my first movie where he's playing more the straight man. Because, you, you, you know, he could be the silly guy as well. Yeah. He could be the idiot. He could, be, the, here, he could be a real the jerk. Very yeah, good. Very good. <laughs> but, like... Here he's he's the straight man and John Candy's the the, the fool. But mm -hmm. right. continue, Robbie. Continue. Martin makes it to the airport. His plane is delayed. I usually go with the character names. This time I just went with Steve Martin and John Candy. It just made That's it easy. That's fine. Yeah. Martin sees Candy at the airport after seeing him in the cab earlier on. That's when he's like, "You stole my fucking cab." John Candy is so good at being the guy who is annoying as fuck, but he's so kind, so you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel bad. Yeah, yeah. He's aloof. Yeah. Yeah. Because he immediately, like, tries to make it up to him, and he's like, come to think of it, it was pretty easy to get a cab at rush hour. So I he... use aloof in the shower. Very mm. good. Thank you. <laughs> I have candy in the shower. Interesting. I'm fat. <laughs> All right. I use soap. Uh, yeah, it's probably for the best. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't have a joke. I'm just telling how disgusting you people are. You people? Yeah. Yo, Robbie, uh, uh -huh. you, you guys want to hear a quick story? I had a, I had a friend in high school who did not like oh, to shower. Yeah. Uh, and so his aunt bought him a, a bar of soap, and in the middle was like a $20 bill. And he took it out back. I remember he was like, check this out. He took it out back, took a chisel and a hammer, popped that bad boy open. He was like, I was like, just fucking take a shower. <laughs> take a goddamn bath. Just like Ugh. bathe yourself. It's insane to be like, I don't like taking showers. It's like, oh, do you not like being healthy? Yeah. Like, what, was, you your, like uh, was your high school friend uh, from France? <laughs> nice. European in general. Let's be honest, brothers. Hey, Holy I'm a, in the bath in the shower. I'm always European. Oh nice. no! <laughs> I hate people who are like, oh no, no, it saves water. Fuck you, piss in the toilet. Just like I have a friend who likes to say, like, yeah, I'm kind of a when it's yellow, leave it mellow kind of guy. And then I went to, I was like, no, but when you're at my house, you flush your piss. <laughs> like, I don't care what you do at your house. At my house, you flush that. I like to shit in the shower. That's yeah. bad. Zombie waffle stomp stomps? That. Yeah, waffle stomp, that's it. Yeah, yeah, call that a waffle stomp, baby. Stomp that bad boy right down the drain. You're never welcome in my house again. I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> I would never turn down a hot dog and a beer. Yeah. Talk or, uh, or a coffee. Or uh, gives them a lot of options. A tea? Yeah. yeah, he does. He does, but you started with the right combo, brother. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> like a hot dog and a beer? Yo, I'm in. Like, let's go. Yeah, well, it shows, like, Steve Martin is very closed off to the... He's already just... He's in a foul mood. And, yeah, I don't blame you know, him. No, his, his day is going pretty terribly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get it. You know what I really like about this movie? There's a lot of movies where a guy like Steve Martin, he works so hard, his family hates him, they never see him. But in this, like, he's a guy who, yeah, he works hard, but he genuinely loves his family. His family is genuinely excited to see him. There's no threat of divorce looming over mm -hmm. his head. There's never this idea of like, oh, his wife's gonna leave him if he doesn't get home. He's constantly trying to call his wife and talking to her and they communicate throughout the movie. Yeah, uh, like, by all means, it's a healthy, yeah. family yeah you know? and that is really great to see because we see in the pageant later on even his daughter's like i'm thankful that my dad's gonna be home because like he's not a bad guy he just works yeah yeah, yeah. and he's probably usually home yeah mm -hmm. and he's not neglectful or anything i really like that aspect of the movie that it is for the most part a very wholesome film yes yeah, yeah. i think uh that's the character arc like noah had an arc it's like the good character arc of the like you know he's closed off to everybody else but the family he's like a family guy yeah it's like well you see uh something 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 damn it i should have the lyrics in front of me 
But where are hey, those hey, good old-fashioned cumples? What? All right, so, <laughs> who the hell knows? All right, so Dale Griffith. <laughs> What's with this guy here? <laughs> All right, listen. This sucks. Because first off, how do you... If you're Steve Martin, how do you get... He bought a first-class ticket. Hmm. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, you have a first-class ticket, but a coach seat. So how does that work? Yeah. And and then the lady's just like, I've had enough of your shit. Yeah. He's like, you had enough of my shit? I just bought a ticket. Yeah, I don't like that. But Del Griffith takes his fucking shoes off on a plane. And his socks. Yep. He should have to register as a sex offender. <laughs> That's heinous. That is a heinous thing to do on an airplane. I agree. I agree. I have coworkers who clip their nails at their desks. Ugh. It mortifies me. That's fucked. That's awful. I'll be sitting there working all of a sudden here. And it's just like, what? I, I go, I'm getting coffee. I'm getting up and getting a cup of coffee. Dude, you got to go to HR. I can't. My boss does it. Another co another the guy who sits across from me does it. I'm like, what are you fucking people doing? You got to You got to You got a clean house. Yep. That is yep. completely unacceptable. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah. Luckily, it's not their toenails. But like, oh, ew. to clip your fucking fingernails at work, it's like, do that at home. Yeah. I could never fathom clipping my nails at work. No, never. But Every now and then, you'll see someone brushing their teeth in the bathroom, and I'm like, I get it. You may have to go somewhere afterwards. Sure. I get sure. that. Yeah, fine. Uh, I can. They say brush after every meal or whatever. Yeah, and like, honestly, if you're doing it in the bathroom, I ain't going to complain. No. Now, if I heard someone <laughs> clipping their fucking nails in the bathroom, I'm going to yeah. fucking complain, brother. Somebody, somebody brushing their, uh, their, uh, their teeth at the, uh, the water cooler. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you want to hear something embarrassing that I did at work the other day? I vomited yeah. at work the other day. Oh. Yeah, I had a really bad migraine, and it made me have to throw up, and I was fucking vomiting. I made it to the bathroom, and I'm, like, vomiting in the stall, and someone had to come in and take a pee. And all I, I just worked through the vomit. like, I'm really sorry for whoever is next to me. <laughs> Damn. Damn, brother. Uh, and he said, yeah, you should be, you fucking bitch. <laughs> and then he gave me a swirly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you work in a middle school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that third grader really gave you the business. Yeah. A, yo, third graders are big these days. Yeah, that third grader had a beard. <laughs> I mean, they're in third grade, but they are 17 years old. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, not now that we're on a tangent, real quick. Uh, as a as a teacher, like you never really get to piss, like you do, but then you're like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta do this first. I gotta do this. Oh yeah. And then before you know it, you gotta pick up the kids again. So it's like fuck. So then, like, mm. you get home and you piss, and that shit is like neon. It's it's so yellow. Well, you gotta drink it's, water. It's old piss. Ah, uh, you know, mm. like an orange when was, Gatorade. When I was yeah. teaching, one of the kids once asked me, like, "Mr. Hall, that bathroom's really small. How do you doo doo in there?" <laughs> and that's when I realized, I was like, you know, what's funny? I've never had to poop while I've been teaching. Mm. Yeah, uh, I had uh, a stomach thing, and I had to poop when I was teaching. Like, I taught for two years, and not once in that whole time did I ever have to poop while I was, like, there. And I think I was just so busy, and, like, I also think my mind was like, you don't want to poop in that bathroom. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't like pooping outside my house, to be honest. Yeah, you like the comfort of a, yeah. of a home poop. You need home yeah. field advantage when it comes yeah. to dumps. Yeah. It's also, I've set myself really nicely. I got the squatty potty, I got the bidet. Right. Like, it's like a whole production when I poop now. <laughs> right. I can't be going just... I can't be sitting on just any toilet. <laughs> no. My, my ass needs the royal treatment. And by that, I mean a hard stream of water up the hole. Nice, dude. So I'm glad I'm glad you painted that picture for me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no problem. No problem. You can sometimes use it as an enema. Okay. Public enema number one. Very Ooh. good. Nice. Yeah. That's an Iron Maiden song, and I'm wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. Very cool. Yeah. Let's talk about this movie. Yeah, we should. We I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Their plane lands in Wichita because of the weather in Chicago. We get a Ben Stein cameo, and mm -hmm. he tells everyone that the flight to Chicago is canceled. This is one of those weird things. Like, why did you ask Ben Stein to do this of all, like... Because it's John Hughes, and he was in yeah. Ferris Bueller. Yep. He's in the uh, John Hughes-verse. I've yeah. never seen Ferris Bueller. 
Get the fuck what out of here. What the fuck? I've Brother. never seen Yeah, I've never seen it. I think you'd like it. It's a great movie. It's like a classic. I don't doubt I'd like it. I'm not saying I don't. I didn't say I'm not going to like it. I said I've never seen it. Yeah, I didn't say you. I, I was just saying. I think I you'd like it. I can't believe you don't like that movie. That's crazy. I've yeah, had this conversation. Honestly, Robbie. <laughs> I had this conversation recently with friend of the show, Mark Ponty, about Lord of the Rings. How I told him, like, I'm afraid to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy because so many people are like, it's the greatest thing ever. That the pressure is now on me to like it mm. and not for the movie to be good. Yeah, I understand that. And like, it's it's like Elvis. Like fifty million Elvis fans can't be wrong. Objectively, without even seeing Lord of the Rings movies, they must be great. Yeah, I mean, I've only yeah. seen the first one, and it was in theaters, so it, I was like, what, ten? I don't know. So I don't fucking know. You know, they're probably great. No, it's just everyone talks about them like they're the greatest things, and I'm like, they must be good. There's no way. Like, if I watch and I don't like it, I'm just gonna on the podcast be like, yo, oh, five stars. Well, <laughs> five stars. I mean. I mean, we did, you know, the first six Star Wars uh, yeah. previous episodes. Check them out. It's one good one. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's one good one. You know what the difference is? Star Wars fans hate Star Wars. That's true. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Like, first of all, there's more than one good one. So all far? Right. The first, okay, episode, the first six. No, there's more than one good one. There's Bro, one. It's... There's one excellent one. Okay, I'll give you that. You know, but the others are to- like there are totally fine movies in there. Like okay. A New Hope is a good movie. Yeah, sure. Sure. You know, Return of the Jedi is good. The Empire Strikes Back is phenomenal. That's the one. Yeah. And then the prequels are, you know, listen, I was very easy on The Phantom Menace. Oh, that I, movie stinks, brother. I, I think without Jar Jar and all the nonsense, it's a fun movie. And we both liked Revenge of the Sith. I did like Revenge, Re, Sith, the Sith Revenge. Yeah, Sith Boys. Yeah. We should talk about this movie. We though, should right? talk gonna, about this movie. I'm going to reel you guys in off Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we got another cameo as they take dubious Taxiola to a motel. Yeah, that's that. I forget that character actor's name, but he's great. Oh, he's in so many things like Breaking yeah. Bad. Uh, yep. Billy Madison, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think yeah, right? he is. Um, right before this, when they're in the airport, I wrote, I love this It's a line. Larry Hankin. Sorry to cut you off. It Larry is Larry Hankin. Go. Yeah. When they're in the uh, airport, and I, I love this line so much, and it's so not, it's idle, it's it's easy. It's like, um, wait, you're saying I could be stuck in Wichita? No, I'm saying you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the flip of the one word. I'm like, that's excellent writing. Dude. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We also see them accidentally take each other's credit cards, setting us up for later. Mm-hmm. Yep. Martin takes a shower. We see Candy on the vibrating bed. I have a question. Questions. Was Candy in the bathroom while Martin was showering and Martin just didn't hear him? Because he gets out of the shower and there's shit everywhere. Yeah, I believe so. That's Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. But, like, it's weird to not show John Candy in the bathroom roll and instead show him doing stuff actively outside the bathroom. Um, this movie is an hour and a half. The whole movie itself is, like, three and a half, four hours. So there's a lot of things filmed that are cut. Like, That's yeah. true. Yeah, there's, like, a three-hour cut of this movie. Yeah. That would have been bad. I'm sorry. I would not have enjoyed that. But there's a yep. lot of scenes like um, I'll, there's a part at the end I'll point out too without spoiler. But there's a lot of things that like don't link up unless you know like oh this movie's trimmed to high heaven because it it was way too long. Hmm. Yeah, I mean if, if you just put John Candy in there for five seconds, you get the. Yeah, because I was very confused by that because Steve Martin seems like the kind of guy in this movie where, like, if someone came into the bathroom while he was showering, he'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that doesn't seem like he would have been... Because he seems surprised when he gets out of the bathroom, but with the state of what the bathroom was in, or when he gets out of the shower, rather, the state that the bathroom was in, you would have heard the fucking tornado that apparently came through there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And you would have seen the carnage before you stepped into the shower. Yeah. That's true. Hmm. Very confusing. They have to share a bed. It really made me laugh that he just left beers on a vibrating bed. He's like, I didn't know that would happen. Yeah. (laughs) 
Candy is unbelievably annoying. He's making all these noises. And then they start to argue. And I thought this was a great line of Candy saying, I even let you pay so you didn't feel like an intruder. Yeah. <laughs> And then Martin rips Candy apart because none of his anecdotes are anything, which really just sounds like a Long Island open mic. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> well, he, he like really, he just keeps going. And John Candy's face here, it's really good. Like he's like almost teared, teared up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like John Candy's an excellent actor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has uh right at this scene, I'll refer to it as Don Cheadle eyes. Yeah. Where it's verge of crying, but not crying. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good way to put it. He's got Don Cheadle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, this scene here where he rips him, and then you get the... I think this is the most... Maybe not the most famous part of the movie, but it's up up there in the top three. Yeah. yeah the uh, you don't like me speech, but I like right. me. No. This is 20 minutes into the movie. Yeah. You have a full... Hour, you have a full hour and ten minutes after, and the, I thought there would be more buildup of him annoying Steve Martin. Right. It right, seems yeah. like you know they're only together at this point for ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. And then right after that, he goes back to being insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's who he is. Like he said, he's like, I'm not going to change. I am yeah. who I am. Because the next morning they wake up and they're spooning. And this was great. Oh, yeah. where's your hand? Between two pillows. Those are <laughs> pillows. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you see the game? Yeah, you saw the game like that? Steve Martin, again, with the great physical comedy of like, he's not going overboard, but he's just mm -hmm. skeeved out. And yeah. you can see it in the way he's moving his arms and his shoulders. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> anyway, why did you kiss my ear? Why are you holding my hand? Yeah. <laughs> Martin goes to wash his face, but Candy's socks are... What are you doing, dude? I don't know. Being a fucking son of a bitch. Yeah. Yep. And then, I mean, okay, you got to see that those that's underwear, not a towel, dude. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. surprisingly clean underwear, too. Yeah, that's on yeah. you. That's on you, Neil Page, or whatever your name is. Yes. They're going to have a guy pick them up to take them to the train. And the guy is Dylan Baker, played Kurt Connors in Spider-Man. Yeah, he did. Another great character actor. Yep, very, very. He has two arms in this one. He does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that he's going to make his wife carry the bag. Like, Get hilarious. your lazy ass out yeah. here. <laughs> she just puts the baby aside. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, we, we could do it. She's like, no, he, no, no, she could do it. She, she may be it. short and thin, but she's yeah. strong. I, that baby came out sideways. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't even scream or nothing. Yeah. Uh, this scene where he's introduced to them and he shakes their hands. <laughs> so he shakes uh, John Candy's hand and then he spits into his hand and shakes Steve Martin. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, um, I think that, that was like ad-libbed right on the fly. So. Yeah. Uh, John, John Hughes told him to do that. Yeah, yeah. And not he didn't tell Steve Martin because he mm -hmm. wanted the genuine reaction. That's great. Yeah. The look of disgust on his face is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a doggy in the back of the truck where they are riding. He's a mean old doggy. <laughs> yeah. When they first pull in, the, first of all, we see a horse and buggy in the place they're getting dropped off at, just like riding around in the back, which I just thought was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also love the shot of the frost on them as they're like frozen and even the dog is like frozen in growly face <laughs> at the train martin is clearly just like i'm not giving this guy my address i don't need the money back that yep. badly yeah they take the and, train yeah oh sorry and here you know um he's he's like all right i'm getting two tickets do not put them together yes I'm not, <laughs> you put these yeah. as far apart as possible on this train yeah. and if you you look at this goodbye and then you look at their goodbye later mm -hmm. and it's very different and that's that's real nice yes that's a nice touch well you start to see that the real change here because when the train breaks down mark he sees john candy struggling and he's like fuck wh why would i not go and help him yeah. yeah yeah it's like now he's you know he, he's the one guy he knows. He's in the middle of nowhere. 
Yeah. And he knows that John Candy is a kind soul. You know, like, you just can't deny that. So Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it's like we talked about before. He's annoying, but everything he does is out of the goodness of his heart. Right, Mm -hmm. right. And it's like, there's no malice here. He's just insufferable. Fuck it. I guess I'd rather not be alone. Because at the end, insufferable but endearing. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this whole movie is about Steve Martin's character not wanting to be alone. He doesn't want to be alone on Thanksgiving. He's trying to get to his family. Yeah. And Candy, he just wants a friend since his wife passed. Right. Oh, spoiler. Right. Who fucking cares? It's a. Robbie, I didn't know old. that. I didn't fucking know that. You watched the movie b- before I did. That's true. I've seen it a bunch of times. Yeah. 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 You should have watched till the end. Oh. I thought movies stop at 60 minutes, so I just turn them off. No, that's the show 60 Minutes. Oh, that's my bad. Yeah. I'm John Candy. I'm Del <laughs> Griffith. <laughs> I hated the music in this, by the way. Really? Ooh. I'm not a fan of the 80s soundtrack to movies. I'm just not. I, like, there's a lot of harmonica, which I do love, but it's like this weird Chicago blues a lot of time you see in tons of 80s movies. Uh, watching this for the, you know, 18th time this week alone, the John John Hughes uses like the same type of, like, uh, record scratch, like yeah, same yeah. type of music. And uh, when they're in the taxi with Doobie, there's like a, like a fast paced like 80s rock song going on. Yep. Yes. I'm like, is that a real song or is this like, I don't know, used for the movie? I looked it yeah, up. I think it's. Oh, it's, go ahead. oh, do you know the name of the band? I have it in front of me. If you don't. I don't know. I've never heard of this band, and they've been a Scottish rock band since 1983. Like, consistently, this has been a band for 40 years. Balam and the Angel. Okay, I've never Not heard of them. Never heard of them. I was Me like, neither. you know what? This song's pretty good. It's probably sung by, like, a, uh, I don't know, like a rat or a uh, early Motley crew. It kind of. Yeah. No, nope, you got Balam and the Angel. I figured it was just, like stock music. Yes, that's what I thought too and I was like, yeah. And then when I watched it for the 88th time this week, I was like you know what, I gotta gotta figure out who the hell sings this song. Oh. Pat mm. doing your homework. Damn. Balam yeah. and the Angel, uh, they will be at the Paramount Theater next. Is that real? Are they no. gonna be at the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be at, uh, they'll be at uh, One-Eyed Jack's about to maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm actually glad you brought up Doobie's Cab again. I'm gonna tell you why. It was the skeeviest cab in the world. But you know what we saw on the walls of those cabs? On the, on the of that cab? Booby. Boobies. Did we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like with Nip? Yeah. Oh, shit. I gotta go back and crank Hog. Yeah, brother. <laughs> a Hog. A, a Hog was cranked by all. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anytime I get to use that, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I don't blame you. I like it. Uh, Martin and Candy take a bus. They watch two people make out, and Candy points it out. And he goes, well, "Want to take a picture to last longer?" But it's like you guys are leaning into the yeah. aisle, and he's like yeah. rubbing his face. He's like motorboating her. It's like, all right, guys. Yeah, and then after, like after he gets busted. Then it shows them again briefly, and they both have a cigarette. Like, yeah. they fucked. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's so good. So, like, um, why don't you take a picture? It lasts longer. That's a very common phrase in shows and movies, and I yeah. wrote it down. I wonder where that originated, and if that even originated here. Hmm. Because there's, like, a lot of, like, if you're watching Family Guy or, like, the movie Ted or more common shows and movies there's a lot a lot a lot of planes trains automobile references oh yeah i mean so, previous episodes i mean deadpool and wolverine yeah you know that's so that's many. very very uh planes trains and automobiles coded you know mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, i just love using the word coded after that. Like, very gay coded if you ask me <laughs> Oh god, yeah, no. These these characters are definitely Del Griffith coded. Yeah. We we'll use it as a slur from now on. <laughs> Speaking I'm of to, I'm not going to San Francisco. They're all coded there. 
<laughs> Speaking of slurs, when Steve Martin tries to tries a song, everyone looks at him like he used one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like Two coins in a fountain. Yeah. Like what the fuck are you trying to? I know what everyone will know. Yeah. He's just. Uh, he's very. You know. He's New York. Yeah. He's out of touch. Mm-hmm. Candy then leads them all in singing the Flintstones theme, which is incredible. Yeah. He even does the Wilma. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even this scene, I remember it from an episode of The Office. Yes, it is in it. In, yeah. In the, the office. When, the, when they're going out and they start singing The Gambler. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. And then Creed is playing hooky. And they p- pick him up, like, oh, oh, look, it's Creed. He's like, oh, they're actually trying to play hooky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get to St. Louis, and we see how smart Candy's character here is, because he's tricking people into buying shower rings. It's like, this one's autographed by Daryl Strawberry. Yeah. This one was the fucking great emperor of China's or some well, he, shit. He's selling them as, like, earrings and shit, mm-hmm. and, they're, yeah. and they're putting them in their ears. And he sees the group of teenage girls goes, oh, you look older. Not just a little older, but like 18 or 19. Yeah. And I always love the synchronized handing of money. Yeah. It, that's very yeah. like, that always makes me think of a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. But that was really, because they all have the shower rings in their ear. Yeah. yeah. That's great. While they're eating, Martin decides they're going to go their separate ways. He rents a car, but it's just gone. Yeah, it's just not there, and that's where he throws a fucking fit. I don't blame him. Yeah. They're messing with the wrong guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> that again. Yeah. And uh, even his travel by himself from the uh, parking lot to the rental car agencies. Yeah, he slides you know, down a hill. It's all yeah. physical acting, which is like his bread and butter. Yeah. So good at it. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know what this movie is rated. It's R for this R. one season. For, yeah, yes. just because of this. That's yes. what I was going to say. They're so reserved mm-hmm. that the F-bombs here are excellent. Yeah. It's really good stuff. And then the punchline of the woman going, You're fucked. fucked. Yeah. Excellent. Is amazing. Yep. This is That is so good. This, um, when Steve Martin was reading the scripts, there's two scenes that got him to do the movie and this is one of the scenes he read this and uh it's like yep i'm on i am in brother Uh, it makes sense this is right up his alley and it's just it's brilliant it's just brilliantly written this whole scene Mm -hmm. yeah and And, uh, it's 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 also like relatable you ever been like fucked by a company and then like you're just like Mm -hmm. so close to snapping but you know that this person isn't the person who did it it's the somebody down the line fucked up I recently sat there shouting at a manager, you're committing fraud. And I, re- and I realized <laughs> that I've become what I hate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that happens to everyone, Rob. Uh, no, I, bu- I bought a couch. I'm not going to mention the company because I don't want to slander the company. Okay. But when they were like, yeah, we'll schedule the delivery. And when they hadn't called me to schedule it in like a week, I called them. And there was like, oh, there's a problem with your payment. I was like, oh, I wasn't charged. They're like, no. And then I checked and I had been charged. So oh, I shit. called them back. I was like, hey, you said I wasn't charged, but I was. Why don't you just deliver my couch? Like, you need to come into the store and show your ID. I was like, why? You already took the money. Like, we're protecting mm. our customers from fraud. I was like, you already took my money. Yeah. You're frauding me. Yeah, you've committed fraud. Yeah, and I'm- you're the fraud. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there in the fucking store going, you're committing fraud. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a good look. It wasn't a good look. That's one of those moments where, as you're doing it, you uh, you escape your body and you're like, uh oh. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah. And it was funny because I went there and Laura's name is the main on the account, <laughs> and the guy was like, "You're gonna have to come back with her." And I was like, "Brother, brother, listen. You think I'm bad? Like, I assure you, <laughs> I assure you, you don't want me coming back with her." He's like, "You have no choice." I'm like, "Dude, it is your funeral." It is your... I tried to settle this man-to-man. She grew up in the North Shore of Long Island, brother. You're oh. cooked. You're cooked. <laughs> you're, you're dead. You're like... like That's it. That's it, brother. I'm South Shore. I may curse. She's mm. going to say things that's going to break your soul. Dude, I'm taking her to Starbucks right before. 
I'm going to purposely fuck up her order. <laughs> riled up. We're going to Target. The thing she wanted is sold out, and we're coming here, brother. <laughs> and you're fucked, brother. Prepare you're yourself. Fucked. And this then afterwards, war. I'm going to take her to the Americana and buy her anything she likes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Long Island talk. Yes. Hey, Long Island hey. strong, baby. Hey, brother, 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 brother. Hey. Sorry, I don't know how many... If this is a trivia question for any of you guys, how many times is the F word used in this scene? Andy. Is... Oh. 19. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I assume Eight. it was a trivia Eight. question. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. It wasn't my trivia question. You can, re- you can reword it for trivia. I would just like to point out that I'm still laughing at Rob. <laughs> you sweat brother, 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 brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like a chortle. That's like your laugh. Oh, brother, brother, brother. <laughs> Martin insults the cab dispatch and gets punched the fuck out. And the line he uses that was like the final straw wasn't even that bad. No, but like you can't you can't go around say, like f- saying fuck you to everyone. Yeah. Like somebody's going to punch you in the face. Oh, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when Candy almost kills him, he gets. He goes. You better help this guy up, and he just grabs him by the nuts. Yeah, previous episode basket case. Check that out. Oh, that's true. That was like last week. <laughs> uh, Two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Very yeah, that recently. In, that was back in Spooktober. Ah! Ah. I have a question. Are they modulating Martin's voice here? Is someone else talking? Is Steve Martin just changing his voice? I think they're modulating it. Because it's doing it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of talking like this. Yeah. Funny stuff. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I think here, because this next scene coming up, it's two of them. Got Tim, them in a car together. No outside forces. Pure comedic gold's coming. There's so many, like, little memorable things in this next five seven minutes it starts with candy and he's playing with the seat and he goes the problem is once you start playing with it you can never get comfortable and he goes then <laughs> stop playing with it yeah <laughs> you know i think um this movie is great because it gets funnier as it goes yeah yes you know that's a good, yeah that's a good point. i think the the prime of it is the automobiles yes part. Yeah. Uh, and Rob, I, I believe you agreed because you said it before. Your I do. favorite part's coming up, you know, when yep. they're on the highway. Great I think stuff. this coming up, yes. Because then we cut to, I, this is also great before Candy is driving, but he's like, what is there one, th- name one thing you don't like about me. And the only thing he can come up with is that he plays with his balls a lot. Yeah. But the only reason he's been playing with his balls is because they are fucked. They have been traumatized. Yeah. He has suffered testicular trauma or torsion ah, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I didn't even put that together. Yeah, that's the yeah. only time he's played with his balls is because this guy mangled them. Yeah. You know, right. so it's the and same. I think it also speaks to John Candy's character in this because, like, he could say something like, mm-hmm. oh, you're fucking mean or, like, you're, you're selfish or all this stuff, but... He just goes with like a nothing thing because he doesn't want to hurt Steve Martin's feelings, you know? You know what's, you know what's funny? I genuinely didn't see it that way because I don't see uh, Neil Page or Steve Martin's character in this being a bad guy in any way. I think he's incredibly patient with John Candy. Yeah, I think he's really relatable because he's mm-hmm. empathetic, but also he's pissed because it's taking him like five days to get home. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good towing the line of asshole to annoyed. Yeah. Where he's not yeah. he's not an asshole. You know, kind of an asshole, sure, but he's not a blatant piece of shit in this. Right. And, but, like, because of that, I would imagine, and you could see it, he's not that pleasant to be around mm-hmm. as no one would be if they were fucking lost in the country, right. you know? Yeah. So stuck in Wichita, yeah. Kansas with the BTK right. killer in the prime. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, just this movie's great. You know? Yes. Yeah. But it's also like Martin's in the right because everything John Candy's character does fucks things up. 
Yeah, and it's yep. irksome, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and he's fucking everything up. Yeah, I couldn't believe he was able to sleep while John Candy was jamming to the mess around. Yeah. And the car swerving all over the fucking road. Mm. Yeah, I like how he he just wake, he wakes up and goes, "What happened?" Like he, <laughs> he didn't feel any of that. Almost in a deer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. After the car spun and so he's screaming out loud. Yeah, and then, oh, he also he also flicked a cigarette and it went yeah, uh, right in the back seat, right into the back window. Yeah. And then he's sitting there struggling to get his jacket off, and he gets yeah, stuck. both sleeves like a fucking dunce. <laughs> now I've. Uh, I've been a cigarette smoker for 25 years. I'm Damn calling the police. straight. Yeah. Because this is America, baby. And every time I'm driving and smoking a cigarette, and you flick it out the window, because fuck the goddamn environment, brother. <laughs> I think of this scene, and I make sure that the, the cigarette goes out of the car. That's smart. Because I've done, I've done it once when I was like 18, 19, and I flicked it out, and it came back in the, uh, just like, exactly like this scene. Oh, wow. Shit. I parked, and I was like, why is there a cigarette butt in the back seat? <laughs> you know what I do? I leave my gas cap open. I see if I could get it in. Yes. That's dumb. Dude, it's yeah. a fun game. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I'm really into, uh, uh, ski ball, and this is ultimate ski ball. You know oh, what's yeah. going to suck? Yeah. At the end of this Sticks episode, I'm going to have to air a R.I.P. Pat and Andy thing. <laughs> yeah, Your cars eventually we, yeah, yeah, we will be dead. Well, guys, <laughs> uh, tune into next week's uh, episode. It's an in memoriam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, full disclosure: I've never once smoked a cigarette in my life. Mm. You know what? You're a shape. Can you guess what shape it is? It's a square. Nice, Robbie. You dog. Mm. Hey, Andy, are you permanently hot? Because you are not cool. <laughs> Matt, you've cut me to the core. <laughs> Candy starts driving on the wrong side of the road. People try to warn them, and this for me was the funniest line in the movie. When well, you're going the wrong way, and Candy goes, "He's probably drunk. How would he know where we're going?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he agrees. He goes, "Yeah, how would they know?" What are you, a fucking idiot? <laughs> and they start making like the, all right, pal. Like, yeah. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. And it's funny because like this is when like they're starting to like be okay with each other. They're yeah. starting to get along. Be copacetic. Yeah, yeah. And then they almost die. And then the car burns up. Mm-hmm. Stuart Copeland ascetic. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Also, uh, like a, a John Hughes thing is synchronized yelling. Yes. Yeah. You're going the wrong way. The husband wife. Yeah. Perfect matchup. Yep. They're saying the exact same thing. You're going to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they drive between the two big trucks, and I really love this. We yes. see the skeletons, mm-hmm. and then John yeah. Candy has the <laughs> devil. <laughs> the devil. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Great imagery. It's really, really good. This is a great touch when after they stop, his fingers are stuck in the dashboard mm-hmm. and John Candy has bent the steering yeah. wheel. Yeah. <laughs> That's really fun. Just over the top enough to be like, this is kind of a cartoon, but it's also, you know, very, it's very real. It's great. It's great. Yeah. They based so much of it in reality that when they bend that reality, it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's a, a lot of believability. Yes. In the yeah. comedy. Candy then acts like his back is really hurting him, so Steve Martin helps him with the truck. He's like, ow! Ow! Yeah. Ow, my back! <laughs> the car goes up in flames as they sit on Candy's luggage. This one I noticed. I think Steve Martin has a great Joker smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Like, when he's, like, losing it, it's like, oh, this guy would be a good Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he'd do better than Jared Leto. That's true. I think anybody would. Yeah. I think Plank from Ed, Ed, and Eddie would do better. Than that, <laughs> Excellent reference. Thank you. As Martin laughs at Candy because he's going to get charged for this, it turns out that Candy used Steve Martin's credit card, and he thought that he just put his credit card in his wallet out of kindness. Yeah. <laughs> he says, why would you do that? Kindness. <laughs> That's great. And then he gut punches him. Yes, right after he goes, are you mad at me? Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you could have killed me with the way you punched me in the gut when I wasn't ready. That's how Houdini died, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Martin gets a hotel room by giving the guy $17 and a really nice watch because all his credit cards are destroyed. And then John Kent... I have a question real quick. Yeah. How did they put the car out? Uh, snow. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You ever see a be... car fire in real life? Oh, I was in yeah, one. You, could... you were in one? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm talking to you now, aren't I, brother? So, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I've ignored well, I... a lot of things Rob has said. No. <laughs> when I was um, probably about 14 or 15, uh, my mom used to drive this truck, and it was one of those ones that just had the single bed in it, so it was just my mom, me, and my brother in the same thing. Yeah. And it was an old green truck. And we were driving, and it stalled out. And my mom sat there just trying to crank it, trying to crank it, trying to crank it. Hell and, yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. And then the engine just blew up. Damn. And there was a huge fire. And I was in the middle because I was the smallest. And both my mother and my brother made sure they got out of the car. And I was, and they were, like, pushing in on me. I was like, I, I got to go, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I also need to leave the vehicle. And it was funny because it, it was an oil fire. And these guys came out of their house with the hose. Oh. And you do not want to use a hose. Oh. And the fire department comes, and the guy comes running over, screaming. Like, another neighbor's like, do not use that hose. Whatever you do. Right. Do you need not... a foam. Yeah. And... Yelling, uh, anytime I went to a bachelor party, that's the only thing my girlfriend yells at me. No hose. <laughs> no hose. <laughs> and I'll never forget it, because my dad got a ride there from his roommate at the time. Because it was after my parents had separated. And... The roommate was, and they were going to drive us home until the cop was talking to the roommate and she was drunk. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, shit. Uh, no, that's a true story, though. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe I never told you that, Andy. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first I'm hearing. Wow. Yeah, no, it was uh, one of the scariest moments I've ever I would watched. imagine, yeah. It was absolutely It was. We had just gone off the parkway or maybe Sunrise Highway, and it was... Right one of those weird stretches in like a suburbanish area that's right off a of parkway or sunrise, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. And so like we were almost back on sunrise and we got lucky that it burst right in front of a house and people came running outside. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So John Candy offers the guy two dollars <laughs> and a Casio watch. This is incredible the way he like runs the watch down yeah. the yeah. <laughs> and presents it. He's a salesman at heart, man. He is, yeah. His se selling is so good. Mm -hmm. He's such a good salesman. Yeah. I'd buy anything from John Candy. Yeah. Candy talks to nothing or his wife, who is not there. Son Martin feels bad. What? <laughs> Son of a bitch. She's yeah, not this, dead yet. This part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no, she's dead, brother. This part it get it gets me because he's he's just like he says like uh, you were you know you were right. I'm the most annoying son of a bitch that has ever been. I didn't realize she was dead. I thought his wife left him at this point. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, but like yeah. knowing is what makes it sad. Knowing is half the battle. There you go. Because knowledge is power. Yeah. <laughs> knowing is also a movie starring this Nicolas Cage. Hmm. Yeah. Martin feels bad, so he lets Candy stay in his room, and they really start to bond here. Because there's alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Candy talks about loving his wife, and they do the toast to the wives, because that's really why they're both there. They both love their wives. Yeah, he says, like, at least you got somebody to go home to. Yeah, that's sad. Man. You have somebody to grow old with. Yeah. yeah she like, ain't growing uh, old, brother. <laughs> brother, is she growing mold? Because she's dead. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you have somebody to strangle with a, a lamp, and then you kill yourself on the uh, bench press machine in the basement. No, Chris no. Benoit, it was actually yeah, we know. Uh, I it knew was it. originally Steve Martin and Chris Benoit. Oh, wrestler. was it? <laughs> yeah. And then what? Kevin Sullivan broke in. Yeah, uh, Kevin Sullivan plays uh, Michael. I McKean. hate that. I feel bad saying that because <laughs> Kevin Sullivan. Died oh, he just recently. died. Uh, yeah. Now I feel bad. Uh, don't speak ill of the dead. Andy has no idea who Kevin Sullivan is. Sorry, Andy. Every time I'm on, I loop this back to wrestling. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Because that's all right. I know. <laughs> Robbie does the same thing. So <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah, I do it without it. you on it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I've done it with Andy and another guest who doesn't watch wrestling, and they both look at me like I have four heads. Yes. So <laughs> four penis heads. Mm. Oh, that's normal. Quadrapenis. Yes, dude. 
The next morning, Candy and Martin are struggling to get the car out of the snow, and he backs into a building, and they're like, oh, fuck, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Yo, when I was watching this, my wife, uh, we were watching it together, and she was like, but that's, but that's illegal. I was like, yeah. What you... <laughs> Let me... Yeah, it, it's illegal to break a storefront or whatever. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? I mean, ask that guy who ran into the nail salon recently. Oh, Lord. God. Killing four people. Monster. Really? Yeah. yeah. Not good, dude. <laughs> Did Damn. you hear what he told the judge? No. no. I, re I remember having 18 beers. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the, like, you know, get a, if you get pulled over and you've been drinking, which I don't recommend folks at home. You yeah. say I've had two beers. Two. No matter what you this blow. Guy said, oh, dude, I had two cases of beer. Two full cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read something that 7-Elevens, like, there's like 95, like, people driving through a 7-Eleven, like, 95, it happens 95 times a year. I can see that, yeah. The one on my corner that happened before COVID, like, years ago, but it's happened to this one, so... Yeah. Very common. That's nuts. Hmm. Watching this for the first time this week, thinking like when they go through the, the, the storefront of the hotel, I'm like, oh, man, they're going to just destroy his credit card. And then after I watch it for the 237th time this week, I'm like they didn't leave a credit card. They right. Paid with they paid it with, yeah. yeah, they wouldn't know who he is. Get exactly. exactly. out of there, brother. That's what I said to my wife. I was like, mm -hmm. they're fine. But yeah. also, like, like she's like, but that's a bad thing to do. I'm like, what are you, fucking six? What is this? Here, let me tell you something about the 80s. Nothing was <laughs> illegal if you didn't get caught. Yep. Yeah. Like, as long as no one watched you do it, you were fine, brother. Yeah. Yeah. They sing Blue Moon on over Kentucky as they drive. They get pulled over for going 78 miles per hour. We get another cameo. It's Michael McKeon as the cop. He impounds the car for not being street safe, which, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I like how he's here. Like, you know how fast you were going? He's like, actually, my speedometer's melted, so I actually can't see anything. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, okay. There's a love, uh, there's a lot of, like, little good um, John Candy lines in here. Like, nope, not a single one. Yeah, <laughs> not a one. And it's it shows he's, he's a salesman at heart, and he's a lovable guy, but you're not... Get yourself out of this. No, you cannot. Yeah, nope, only the radio works. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. The car gets impounded. Martin and Candy then ride back in the back of an 18 wheeler. And they're sitting in the freezer. All, uh, at least they'll be in the heat. It's, ah, and actually, they, we can't ride in the front. Yeah. Uh, the big rig driver, the three seconds he's in, milks it. I don't know if you get his facial expression, crushes it. No, I don't. Because he, uh, he's like, oh, I, you know, at least there's heat. We can ride there. He's like, ah, actually, he doesn't want any any like passengers with him. And it just focuses on the guy's face and him, like, nervously closing the door. <laughs> Which I think it's like a for three seconds he's on. This guy crushed it. Yeah, so I, I have a question. Questions. John Candy has, like, kind of a shiner the rest of the movie. Yes. So, like, did that... He got in the cab and the guy punched him? No. That's in, why he's like... In the um, 37 hours of cut footage for the movie, <laughs> uh, Steve Martin punches him in real life uh, the, over a, a gambling debt that John Candy owed him. Uh, no. He, <laughs> there's, a, there's a scene in the movie where how, I think it was when he punches him in the stomach after the car fire. I think he originally punches him in the face. Because now that scene's cut, but now he has the shiner the rest of the movie. So it's kind yeah. of visible here, and then it's very visible in the closing scene. And yeah. when I watched, I was like, "What the hell's happened with this? He, like, does he have Crohn's disease now? What <laughs> what happened to this character? He doesn't." I look just good. I just assumed that he got punched by the the truck driver. It's it's somewhere in one of the uh, the cut scenes for the movie. Yeah. Right? That the character, I think, um, after the car fire, they go to a strip club. So it might be after that scene. That's like cut okay. from this whole movie. But there's so much stuff that was recorded that doesn't make the final cut. That's like a back scene. I only know this because I've seen this movie 380 times this week. They leave off at a train station. They're going to go their separate ways. Martin goes home. Candy goes to a church. That's when Martin goes to talk to him. And he's like, what the fuck, dude? Why didn't you go home? 
Turns out he has no home because his wife's dead. Well, like the the goodbye that they that they give, mm-hmm. like they hug, they yeah. embrace, like they're friends. Yeah. And he's like, yo, genuinely, like, take care of yourself, you know, like all that. And then when he's on the train, you know, he he's going through like, oh, I can't wait to see my family. Yeah, this is going to be great. And then he's like, he's realizing all the things John Candy said, like when they were in the diner. In yeah, I haven't been home in years. And then like he re- he understands now. He's like, oh, this dude doesn't have any place to go. Yeah. And then he goes, he goes, he gets him. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, this, the, this scene, it, it's a, it's not confrontational, but it's border there. Like, Dell, what are you doing here? Yeah. yeah. Why are you still here? Where he's confronting him, but he's not being an asshole. Right. He just wants him to, to say it. Yeah. You know? What's going on with you, fella? Yeah. And Marie, Mar- oh, God, I'm going to cry. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Marie's been dead eight years. God damn, those yeah, Don Cheetah yeah. lies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. John Candy, you beautiful man. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't have a home. Yep. Oh, goodness gracious. Every time you go, that song is hammered <laughs> throughout this. <laughs> that song is played on loop for 16 minutes right here. Yeah. Martin invites Candy back for Thanksgiving dinner. It is very touching watching them carry the trunk together as yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. Martin and his wife kiss at home, and then we get a freeze frame on John Candy's smiling face. He's like, yeah, kiss. Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 sniffer. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to sit in the corner now. I hope you don't mind. He's like, Dell, actually, you got to go. You got to <laughs> go. Actually, Dell, can you cry a little bit? No, oh, boy. The family's there. The whole family's there. Yeah, and? Robert Lee! Mm. Well, this, uh, you know, ten, uh, for me, if we're going to letterbox, yeah, this is a five out of five. Bang. All right, I'll go five out of five. Hell yeah, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm easy going. I, I was going to go, I was going to go four, and a, four, four and a half. So I'll go five. Yeah, no, this, I mean, I've, I'm rooted in nostalgia with this as well. Um, I understand. I understand. Nope. Root canal in nostalgia. Yeah, but also upon watching it, I have no no issues with it at all. I think this is mm-hmm. a ten out of ten, excellent movie. Well, I agree. Then you know what? We did it. We gave it five stars. Hell yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, this is one of the John Hughes movies I didn't watch as a kid, so I don't have the nostalgia factor. Like you know, your Home Alones and your uh, Ferris Bueller's. You like it as a kid and as an adult, and you like it. I watched this as an adult. I was like, I fucking love this movie. Interesting. Like my my guy's Norm Macdonald, and his favorite movie is this. I'm like, well, if my guy <laughs> likes this movie, it has to be a good movie. And I watched it years ago. I'm like, oh, I love this movie. And John yeah, Candy I, can't go wrong. I mean, yeah, this. I mean, it's it's really informative for comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, like I feel like most comedians wouldn't argue that this is very funny. Yeah, it's, yes. you know? it's very funny and uh, probably the best buddy comedy. Actually, well, yeah, I'll say it's definitely the best buddy comedy. I'm trying to think if it's like the best buddy film. I'd say it's like the best odd couple comedy. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah. Is there a difference between odd couple and buddy? I don't know. Nah, I don't think so. Right. Could be. Well, I guess we're saying the same thing, aren't we? Are we yeah. at? <laughs> hmm. I'm your Del Griffin. You're my nail page. Well, redundancy, thy name is Andy. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Well, it's two minutes to songs. I was oh. trying to do an Iron Man in there. I'm sorry. Nice. Probably longer because I have six trivia. Yeah, you, you, we got to do trivia. Mm. So remember nice. to buzz in with your name. I have six. Andy? I have four. Pat? I'm sorry. I have three. Um, I had six, but we got through a lot of them. I have... Damn. I have three. All right. I'll go first. You know, real quick. Yeah, real, real quick. quick. Real quick like sex. I wrote, I wrote this in my notes because I don't know why, but my wife and I, we, my wife was like, you ever see The Princess Diaries? I was like, no. She was like, boy, howdy. So we watched mm. The Princess Diaries 1 and The Princess Diaries 2. And in The Princess Diaries 2, 
there is the coldest line delivery I've ever seen. And it's the the you, you remember Indy's friend in um Sala? Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indy. But yeah, that guy. He's the bad guy in the movie. Okay. In the second one. Jonathan Reese Davies, right? Yes, yes, hmm. thank you. And he says, You'll find fear is not in my vocabulary. And then the other guy, he goes, No, but it's in your eyes. I was like, Ooh. Damn, the Princess Diaries? <laughs> That's fucking fire. Yeah, I figured I'd share. I didn't even know they had a second one. Me neither. And I didn't know these movies existed. Nah, I've never seen them. Yeah. That's with Anne Hathaway, right? Yeah, Annie Haths. Yeah. That's what they call her. Julie Andes. Cool. Yep. Should I go first on trivia? Yeah. <laughs> when released, Paramount was celebrating how many years according to the opening graphic? 60 years, 75 years, 80 years, 100 years. Mm, Patrick, 75? It was 75 years, yeah. Oh, that's... Damn. All right, Pat, you go. Okay, easy one. What time did Neil's plane leave? A, 5 p.m., B, 6 p.m., C, 8 p.m., or D, 10 p.m.? Andy, Andy. 6. Bang, got it. Yeah. All right, Robbie, you go, because I only got three. This is, this is also an easy one. What did Steve Martin leave behind when leaving the office? Mm. His hat, his gloves, his scarf, his jacket. Andy. Andy. His gloves. It is his gloves. Mm -hmm. Gloves hurt. Mm. I'm all out of glove. I'm all out. All right. Um, <laughs> who did John Hughes originally want to play Neil? Was it Tom Hanks, Mel Gibson, Kevin Bacon, or Steve Martin the whole time? Patrick. Rob. Pat. Tom Hanks. It was Tom Hanks. Wowza. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll do a trivia on the fly. Who did John Hughes originally want to play Del Griffith? Was it A, John Travolta? Was it B, uh, not John Travolta? Brother, it, you Rob? are jacking my trivia. <laughs> was Rob. it C, Billy Crystal? Or was it D, John Candy? Rob. Rob. Was it John mm -hmm. Travolta? It's actually not John Travolta. No. Oh, damn. <laughs> it was John Travolta. Uh -huh. I had the exact same question. I gotta tell you, man, my wife died eight years ago. <laughs> that would have been that would have been a not good movie. No, it wouldn't have been. Yeah. Hanks and Travolta would not. Work. I had in in my fake answers. I had Martin Short. Mm. That's a good option. Yeah. What's the name of the book that John Candy is reading at the airport? Russian Rail, Sexo Slovakia, Canadian Mounted, Guatemalan Gape. Andy. <laughs> Andy. Canadian mounted. It is, yeah. Yeah, because he's Canadian. He's reading a sex novel. Yep. Yeah. Also, uh, Rick Moranis was considered for the role. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Who's up? Uh, me, I only got one left. I have three more. Um, right. I'll go. I'll fill it out a little yeah. for you. What alcohol does Neil not have from the hotel mini bar? Is it A, gin? Is it B, Amaretto? Is it C, Tequila? Or is it D, Whiskey? Rob. Whiskey? Correct! I'm so cool. Well, after the train breaks down, what city will the highway take Steve Martin to? Capital City, Worthington City, <laughs> Munchausen City, Jefferson City. Andy. Andy. Worthington. No. Damn. Patrick. Patrick. Munchausen by proxy city. It is not. Nope. <laughs> is it Capital City or Jefferson City? Andy. Andy. Jefferson. It is mm -hmm. Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're moving on up to Jefferson City. Nice. Mm. Uh, because of the rental car scene, uh, this movie is rated R. Mm -hmm. Which country is this movie rated PG regardless? Is it Australia? Good icon. <laughs> and England. Also good icon. Also good icon. Uh, Ireland. Also. Sure, good icon. You know, top of the morning con. Yeah. Uh, or New Zealand. Good icon. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, Rob. Rob. New Zealand. That is true. Nice. That is correct. I guess so. New Zealand is, has funky laws with stuff. I'm so good at guessing. <laughs> it's a sick dance, brother. Thanks, man. What's the number of the train that they're on? 1013, 1031, 1010, 1310. Patrick, I'll go 1310. No. Andy. Andy. 1031. No. Dang. Is it 1013 or 1010? Andy. Andy. 1013. It is 1013. Hey, old brother. Nice, dude. Very good. Very good. Am I, do I have the last one? I have one more. Um, I have two I could do. Go for it. What does Dell tell Neil to buy his kids? A. A chocolate turkey. B. A golden goose. C. A new doll. Or D. A toy car. Rob. Andy. Rob. A golden turkey. Oh, a chocolate turkey, rather. Chocolate sorry. turkey. I got the answers mixed up. <laughs> I am. I am, brother. At the hotel, Steve Martin says he hasn't changed his underwear since Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Andy. Andy. Tuesday. Yeah, and I can vouch for that. What? That's what John Candy says. I can vouch for that. Oh, all right, all right. Sales I haven't work. I haven't changed my, my undies since, like, 2004. Yeah, that explains mm-hmm. a lot. Explains what, Robbie? The smell? The smell, yeah. Hmm. So you, yeah. you call your boxers the Dick Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> Are they impre- Who the hell knows? <laughs> um, how many modes of transportation do they take in this film? Is it A, 5? Is it B, 7? Is it C, 9? Or is it D, 11? All right, so I'm going to be a stickler for your wording here. You I said, did this how, on the fly. How many? Uh, you said how, how many, many different modes of transportation? How many different vehicles did they take is a more appropriate question. Sure, yes. How many things did they physically get into to move places? Five, seven, nine, or 11? Rob. Seven. Incorrect. I'm not that good at guessing. Andy, nine. Incorrect. Dang. Rob, 11. 11, Rob. We have a taxi in the beginning. Oh, I forgot about the taxi. Oh, uh, yeah. They get on the plane. Yeah. They take Wolf Taxi. Yeah. Gus's son drives them. They oh, get, shit. They get on a train. Shuttle bus to the uh, airport. Take another bus. They take a shuttle to the rental car agency. You get a rental car. You get on the big rig. You take the train home. Damn. So Damn. 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 Well, you'll never guess what I did. You ate a bag of grapes. Hmm. Who's putting grapes in a bag? That's how they come. Do they? Oh, come sure. in like a carton. No, they come in, you buy them in bags. I mean, I guess you could, yeah. they also come in a carton, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I usually carton. get mine in a carton. I get mine hey, the you bag. know what? Treat yourself to a cotton candy grape. I tried it. I, just, I, I didn't see the hype. I don't know. I don't, I don't like cotton candy. <laughs> that is truly disappointed. What the I hell? I also don't like cotton candy. Yeah. I wrote nope. a song, though. Have eight beers oh, and have some grapes. <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, would you like to flip some sort of a pick? Yo, fucking call that shit. Yo, heads. It's heads, brother. Damn. I think I'll go first because I got like a real low key thing going. Rock and roll. Just a, an acoustic and a vocal. Aww. No chorus. Just, just it just kind of goes. You know. That's cool. It's pretty short, and it's called um, "I Like Me." Hmm. You know, and it's real about confident guy. Trains. Yeah, yeah, it's about uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. And it goes uh, pretty much exactly like this, Robbie. Okay. 
came down the pike You were always right I smother the poor soul Cause I'm more trouble than any man has ever known And wouldn't you know You say I talk too much I don't have anywhere to be So what's the rush Making a big old fuss I'm not changing I like me, she likes me They like me, I'll never change I'll always stay the same Gotta get you back home Don't want you living like me Living all alone Without a home Well that's my song It's called I Like Me It's very nice Thank you I also really like that that riff Thanks Uh, I um, I don't know if, if I should add you know, like a, a harmony to the vocal or do something else with the guitar. I don't know. I just kept, like, I kept fucking with it, and I was like, I don't know. I don't really hear anything else. Uh, I what thought you... it was really nice. Yeah, I Think, liked it. It's a very beautiful it the way it song. Is. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's like a nice Bob Dylan song, because the way it just goes. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Dude, if I had uh, eight beers on an empty stomach and listened to that, I'd probably weep. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, oh, I don't it. do that. I'm going to advise you not to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, here we yeah, go. He I don't know how he did it. He's got an IV trip or something. <laughs> <laughs> got to got to boof these things nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> I uh yeah, I just figured I'd lean into the, you know, the emotional bits uh you know, really there's there's like three. It's like I like me, my wife likes me. Mm-hmm. My customers like me, like that scene where like, damn. And then the scene where he's sitting alone in his car and talking to himself, well, talking Mm -hmm. to his wife. And then like the very end where he just says it. And all three of those, I'm like, oh. Also, even when Steve Martin says like, oh, you know, at least you got a wife to go home to. Mm -hmm. It's like he doesn't have either of those things. He doesn't have a home or a wife. And he just like lets it roll like Mm -hmm. he doesn't he's not like i actually don't no he's just like yeah you're right i do yeah rolling with the punches type guy that's yeah and it's just like damn Damn. you know yeah but robbie you uh, please please tell us about your song my song very creatively is called planes and trains what about automobiles robbie no (laughs) no no. Right. Uh, so a little peek behind the curtain. About a year and a half ago, I suffered a hand injury. Mm-hmm. And since then, I've been playing bass on the keyboard. But recently, I've decided to pick the bass back up and start playing it again. So I had it all set up. And so nice. I let the bass do a lot of the heavy lifting in this song, even though it's still very acoustic driven. Uh, the bass does most of the lead work and most of the riff work in it. Cool. Uh, is, is it that big old uh, explorer yeah. based? Yes, it is. Nice. Had that all set up. It's. I think it's sounding really good. It's playing really well, so I'm very happy with it. Um, so okay. yeah, this song is called Planes and Trains, and it's just, uh, there's no electric guitar on it. It's acoustic guitar, bass, piano, and drums. And I'm just talking now. I'm just rambling on. So uh, here it goes. Here's my song, Planes and Trains. This guy, he's pretty lame. We 
need calamities Everything's going wrong He won't shut up He's going on and on and on We've taken trains and planes and cars And yet I don't know where we are now I'm determined Thanksgiving alone I'd rather die than not have sweet potato pie I'd rather die than make my daughter cry We've taken trains and planes and cars And yet I don't know where we are now Anywhere in the snow We got no money Nowhere to go He is a good man I'd even say a friend Hell maybe I would Hang out with him again We've taken trains was my song called planes and trains Robbie, that was really good i like that a lot mm-hmm. i like you. that dude thanks yeah the, i really like that piano climb you're doing it bing bing bang bang bing bing bang, mm-hmm. bang. you know that part you know that part yeah yeah i remember it. <laughs> i uh yeah that was something i just kind of wanted to um I, that it was funny i did that i was like because I, after I did it, like I said, I played the bass and the acoustic guitar, and then I started playing with the piano, and I, I was like, what works there? And doing that, I was like, ooh, that I liked. And that's why I let on the vocals, or the cor- the verses, rather, I kind of just let the, I was just playing like the one chord on the piano and letting the bass of the rest of it, because I could let the piano flourish, as you will, on the chorus. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really good. That's that's good. That's a that's a good song. I like, yeah, good, good drive in that. To yeah, nice so little ride along. I greatly appreciate that, guys. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought it was just fun to do this movie. It's fun to write a song and mention Thanksgiving in it because mm-hmm. outside of Adam yeah. Sandler, there are no Thanksgiving songs. Oh, I'm sorry. And Arlo Guthrie. Yep. Alice Restaurant. Eat there. Yeah, so um, um, I I, I mean, doing this movie, uh, I was kind of concerned because it's a it's a comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doing comedies is hard because a lot of it is like, that's funny. I enjoyed that scene. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I was kind of nervous. But again, this movie has those emotional beats where and they're like fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. So like, yeah, I think this this movie works. It's still one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Yeah, I I, and I, I think it inspired both of us to make some pretty cool songs yeah i thought we both had good songs i, I like how they're both very acoustic driven yeah yeah which I, I think also fits the movie well mm-hmm. yeah i whenever i think like road trip i think an acoustic driven kind of kind of thing you know yeah i also um i wrote a spoken word song for the movie oh that's interesting called, that, that's called a poem oh okay uh so your song was planes and trains yeah mine is called automobiles Interesting. Is there something funny about my automobile? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little little ditty I came up with. Um, it's ditty. We don't want it. No. Uh oh. So I call this automobiles. Okay. Here in my car, I feel safest of all. <laughs> I can lock all the doors. It's the only way to live. In cars. Oh man. Here in my car. <laughs> Very that's little, good. That's wow. a little Paul of my call. Automobiles. Excellent. Thank that's you. That's really, really good, man. Thanks. Very good. Took me, good. Took me all week to write that. <laughs> Did it really? It was, it was interesting. 
<laughs> you know what? Because I kept, I was like, I have to put myself somewhere to inspiration. Right. So I'm on the LIR and I wrote a poem called Trains and it wasn't working. Mm. Then I went to JFK and I got in a, uh, got on Spirit Airline. I was like, no, the song Planes isn't working. Right. But then I just I mean, sat in my car and in fairness- I locked all the doors. I was like, you know what? This is the only way I could live in cars. <laughs> In fairness, I don't think the movie Planes was working either. I mean, listen, uh, Pat, thank you so much for taking us through your creative process. Thank you, man. It's, it, that's you know, going to inspire me. Now I, I hope, need... Yeah. yeah. I just really want to inspire others to do well in cars. Yeah. Just yeah. cars. In cars. <laughs> well, uh, Robbie, what do we have going on next week? That is an excellent question. Because we're getting ready for more Christ, and by that I mean Christmas. Mm, wow. And by that, I mean we are doing the Hulk Hogan classic, Santa with Muscles. I am a real American. Fight for the rights of white Christians. <laughs> 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 um, you know, I, I've never seen that movie other than when it was projected on us when we were playing at Beery's. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, oh, I'm hyped. Um, we have we're scheduled to have a friend on next week, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, okay. Um, uh, what, what the fuck was I going to say? Well, Pat, do you have anything you'd like to promote? Hey, uh, follow me on social media, Dunzig. I'm on there. You could see me. I'm around the town. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah, brother! Really, really? uh, Find him around also... town. I'd also like to 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 wish all the listeners a very happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. Andy, happy gobble gobble, everybody! I'm thankful for our listeners. So am I. That's a great. Wow. You know, I was just about to ask Pat, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I am thankful that John Candy is alive and well. No, no, oh, no, no. And, no. Oh, who's right. gonna break we, it to him? I think oh, I just did. What? He's dead, brother. <laughs> did something oh, no. happen? You know what? I'm thankful that in 2020, they did not make the remake of this movie with Will Smith and Kevin Hart. Well, that's because they're making a new one, a different one. Are they? With Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Hmm. Called Planes, Trains, and Automobile? That's what I read on Wikipedia, and we all know it's never wrong. (laughs) Well... Uh, let me tell you where you can find our music. You go to uh, the. Uh, I'm thankful for our music. Oh, that's that's nice. That's mainly, nice. Rob. Mainly because it gives me something to do. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> you go to Spotify. You go to Apple Music, uh, Deezer, wherever you get your music. Cranklebot. Yeah, and you type in the Roids, and you will find a lot of music, plenty of music from the podcast. Otherwise, uh, but if you want everything including guest songs, bonus songs, every single song from the podcast. You go to theroids.bandcamp.com, and there you'll find it all. Well over 200 and probably 50 songs at this point. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, but, uh, you know, just take your time. Go through it. You could also, you know, we have the back backlog of all the previous episodes. You know, like Robbie's about to tell you, send us an email, request a movie, uh contact us and you know we'll we'll talk back we'll uh you know we'll read some we'll of your talk shit up. back to you hey fuck yeah. you yeah fuck you <laughs> we'll uh we'll uh read some of your shit up on on this podcast like we have pre- previously robbie the socials that's great well, you go to instagram you can go to tiktok you can go to youtube where you can find all of our songs there as well and you type in the roids band there we are there we be You can send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. Like Andy said, suggest a movie, give us some feedback. We'll read it on the air. And I guarantee you, if you contact us on any social media platform and suggest a movie, we'll do it, brother. Because we just love the interaction. We love you. We already got a couple of things uh, from fans suggesting it, so thank you. Yep, that's coming up in early the next year. I'm pretty hyped for those. Yeah. And Pat, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Always a treat. Always a blast. Give out your socials so everyone knows where to find you. Uh, Instagram, Dunzig. D-U-N-N-Z-I-G. It's Danzig, but Dunzig. Mother. Brother, mother. (laughs) Oh, mother. 
I'm on there. You can see me around the town. Go follow Pat. Go catch a show. He's a very funny guy. Give us a five-star review wherever you're listening to us. Leave a comment on YouTube. And... Bye, everybody. We'll see you later. (laughs) 